We are in College Station, home of Texas A&M, the Aggies. We're going to cover all the important topics you guys need to know to see if A&M is the best university for you for your study abroad journey. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. Rob here, and we are excited to be sharing all about Texas A&M, all the important things like courses, scholarship, tuition, jobs, and so much more to help you figure out if this is the right place for you in your journey. We got several current students here to talk about their stories. We love helping you guys be successful on your journeys. Be sure to check out our other video we're making. Also, we have a housing review talking about all the top housing options here in College Station. And yeah, we'll have links in the description for all the important information you need to know. But Abhi, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. So I'm Abhilash. I'm a Fall 19 international student here at Texas a &M University. I'm studying my master's in material science and engineering. And yeah, so I've been here for like almost 18 plus months now. So it's been like an awesome journey so far. Let's jump right in with the big question. How much does it cost to study here at A&M? So coming to the topic of tuition fee, like before coming to US, I've had like enough time to actually check out and compare tuition fee of like multiple universities. And A&M was like one of the cheapest among them all. And even the city in which A&M is like the College Station Bryan locations, they're like one of the most affordable places among like the US. So A&M fees usually for like an in engineering departments, usually we need to take 30 credits. So we usually take nine, 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 and then three credits in the last semester. So pretty much for a nine credit semester, it costs about like 12 to $13,000. It might sound a lot, but I mean, if you compare that to like most universities in other parts of USA, it's one of the most affordable ones. As I mentioned, like for the most engineering department, it's 30 credits. And for some departments like MIS, they actually have to have 36 credits. So they take nine credits every semester. MIS is like slightly costlier than the engineering departments if you consider per credit hour fee. But usually like e even after that, A&M is like one of the most affordable universities across USA. And it is also in one of like the top ranking universities. So I would, like from my background research, I would say A&M is like the best bang for the buck university like in USA. So what are other costs that students face here when studying besides tuition? So when you start planning for your master's journey in USA, like the two big aspects you consider are the tuition fee and the living expenses. So as I mentioned, like A&M is like one of the very affordable and like low tuition fee university. And apart from that, like being located in a location like College Station Bryan, which is also a very affordable place to live in, the housing costs and like other expenses are not that high here. Like an average uh, student here can live in like about five to seven hundred dollars like per month. It, uh, again, as I said, it, it, it might sound like a lot, but if you compare it to like even like the nearby cities like Houston, Dallas and Austin, it's pretty much like one, uh, half to like 75 percent of, like, of the cost like of those big cities. College Station Bryan is like pretty much like a small college town and like the Texas A&M University takes up like a big part of like the whole city. So everyone here is like mostly students. So everything is affordable. Everything is closer and like you don't really have to travel much. So you won't really have much spendings here. So yeah, I, I, like on the overall A&M is like pretty affordable and like uh, super convenient like for most in Indian or like international students. Hi everyone, my name is Sanjana. I am a master's student here at Texas A&M. I'm pursuing my master's in construction science and college of architecture. Fantastic, and Sanjana, tell us about scholarships and how students can save money here. Uh, there are like scholarships uh, that provided by the department and the university so if you get like a thousand dollar scholarship then it becomes an in-state tuition and that's like a, almost like a 50 percent off your tuition fees so like i said there are two kinds so one is the university provides the scholarship and another is your own department provides a scholarship so if you get either one of them it's going to help you a lot like to cover the tuition expenses awesome and what is transportation like here in around the College Station Bryan area? So when it comes to transportation for the university, the university has its own shuttle services that kind of powers pretty much all the housing units nearby. So there are like buses uh, seven to eight minutes uh, interval. So these buses basically, they cover uh, most of the grocery stores, the entire university. And uh, also the university has these uh, bicycles which you can actually rent them and go around the university. So they're like um, normal bicycles and uh, fully electric cycles as well. Like. So when new students come here, they fly to the George Bush International Airport at Houston. And from there, you can actually book the ground shuttle service 
which is like the probably the best option to travel to College Station. It's like a two and a half hour travel from the International George Bush Airport to College Station and you can get dropped to your uh, location with your luggages. So it's uh, one of the best options. I mean, I traveled uh, through that, so I think I can look. Great, yeah, we'll have a link in the description so you guys can book those grounds transportation for when you first arrive here in America and get safely to your home. The transport within the campus, there is an app that you can actually check for the bus routes. Also, there is Bryan College Station shuttle service that pretty much covers the other areas of College Station that the university bus doesn't cover. For the local campus bus here, on the campus bus route, there's an app that the students can use that gives all the options for that. And then there's also the local city bus uh, by the government, which is free for students to use, which can get you to all the other places around College Station and Bryan that the local campus bus routes don't connect to. So you can basically get to anywhere on the local bus routes. So there's also another option, like if you get late and uh, you don't have any other transport, you can actually use this service called Carpool. So you just have to call them and tell them your location and you can get a ride back to your house. That would be actually mentioned at the back of your, your Texas A&M ID card. So the m number is mentioned there, you can just call and you can use the transport. And that's a free service for the students, right? Yeah, it's a free service. Awesome. Howdy guys, I'm Jitesh. I am a second year Master's of Science student in Material Science and Engineering. I came to Texas A&M University in fall 2019. I am from uh, Gujarat, India. Awesome. And Jitesh, tell everyone what are the top courses and majors that international students prefer to pursue here at A&M? According to my observation, the top courses that Indian students like to pursue at A&M, uh, first of all, start with the Industrial Engineering major. Then we have Civil Engineering, which has very many sub-branches such as construction engineering, um, construction management, transportation engineering. Also, people like to take up, especially those who have done jobs before, they want to take up MIS courses over here at a and because it focuses a lot on data science. Similar fields are computer science and engineering because at a and it is very much popular. Also, other majors that many of the people like to do over here are electronics and communication engineering. Awesome. And on the Texas A&M website, you can actually go to the different departments, look at the course curriculum, and actually look at the actual classes you're going to take to see if that's the right track or stream or major that you want to pursue. Next, we're going to cover student organizations here at the campus. Yeah, as we all know that Texas A&M is a very uh, international community friendly campus and many Indian students uh, like to call Texas A&M their home. There are a lot of student organizations on campus started by undergraduate as well as graduate students and many Indian students also participate in these organizations. The very you know popular student organization over here is called the India Graduate Student Association which is a very close knit Desi community in which many people, you know, organize, celebrate Indian festivals and, you know, help students guide through with jobs and stuff. Uh, also, another very popular student organization, which I am a part of, is called the Aggie Career Team. It is a subsidiary body of the Career Center at a and which is very popular. And also what they do is they guide you through the whole process of job finding and job search uh, right from even before you are admitted to a and you can have access to all those resources. So a big question that a lot of students have is on-campus jobs. What are the opportunities there? So for on-campus jobs, because a and is a very big student community, around 60,000 students, it is kind of a university in which the jobs are open for the uh, students by the departments itself. So it's like a production com consumption cycle is pretty much there in the university, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of part-time jobs in which students can enroll. The transportation department hires student drivers and stuff like that. But the main job that the graduate students like to enroll in are the jobs which are at uh, various open access labs around the campus. Um, also, there are several jobs in the food industry, such as you have jobs on game days because a and is a very big campus and has a lot of events like Aggie football and Aggie basketball and convocations. A lot of students get employed as cashiers and food servers on that. Mm. Um, that is also one uh, more thing. Uh, many other people are involved as uh, customer service representatives in the recreational and sports center. That is all the non-technical jobs. For the 
technical jobs if we touch down touch base upon the grader and teaching assistant type positions T A R A G A T A R A G A yes exactly so uh, in that that varies greatly from department to department the students can apply through a job portal in which the professors post that they require a grader or a T A position in which you can look up easily and apply for that and that basically avoids you the hassle of you know emailing each and every professor to you know find out T A R A so that i feel it's a very good kind of a support to the international students who mm -hmm. are in uh, look for funding and stuff like yeah, that yeah there's a single place they can go single to place they can get go access to, yeah it's called jobs for aggies portal okay we'll have a link for that as well for you guys now we're going to pivot from on campus jobs and talk more about internships and full time jobs Okay, so talking about internships and like uh, full-time jobs, the very first semester like you come here, like there will be a usually a career fair within like the first 10 days of you, I mean, of the classes being started. So that first career fair is just to getting an idea about like what's happening and like what will happen in future. So you can network uh, with the people in that career fair, like with most companies. Right now, because of COVID and stuff, it is being mostly virtual and online. But previously, like in past years, it was in person. We would have like big halls with uh, the companies coming and like putting up the stalls and that hopefully will be again uh, seen in like the coming years as A&M is planning for uh, to increase the in-person events and stuff like from the, the coming fall. The career center like will give you the most resources and like the most information to get go with your internship and job search. I would say like you should start your internship search as soon as like you come to A&M. The earlier you start like the better it is. I would just like want to put this point out. The university, the branding of the university, it does help up to a certain extent but in, if you want to find internships and jobs in USA it's pretty much usually based on your networking skills and like the more people you know in the industries the, the better like the, are the opportunities like for you to get jobs and stuff so Abhilash being an Aggie does that help in your job search oh yeah definitely like I mean being an Aggie is like one of the best thing about being an Aggie because like the Aggie alumni network is like one of the strongest networks like in I would say like in the entire USA or in the world I would say because every Aggie is like super proud of like what you call being an Aggie so if you reach out to anyone like through LinkedIn or like through internal Aggie resources, like from Aggie alumni forms, like they will pretty much like respond to you as early as possible. And on LinkedIn, we actually have a Aggie alumni page that has pretty much the whole list of like all the Aggies working in like multiple companies and multiple industries. You can technically filter out like which industry and which company you want to see and like you can find Aggies in that company and like then reach out to them. We also have this website called Hire Aggies. Hire Aggies portal is uh, through the career center at a &M. It has like the resources for you like I mean, your resume formats, like, like your resume templates, the CV templates, like your interview questions, like how to answer them, how to get about it how to optimize your LinkedIn profiles. Again, it, it has a list of every alumni of a and and what, what companies are working in and what industries are working in. So you can filter out, find them. It also has uh, email IDs and phone numbers of like most HRs and like most hiring managers who were Aggies in, in the past. So yeah, that's super helpful resource like for uh, finding contacts and like networking in general. To sum it up, it depends on you. The more people you know, like the better it is and the earlier you start, the better it is like in terms of internships and job search. Don't be disappointed like if you don't get one because of the current scenarios, it's not, the industry has been slow, but hopefully it'll pick up soon. But yeah, again, start your internships and job search as soon as like you start at the university and uh, try to improve your contacts and, and your communication and try to network as much as possible. a and has like a lot of virtual and in-person industry panels and like meetings and uh, like and other virtual meets, what you call, or try to participate in them. So that is like the best way to actually network in, in, in this sense of COVID. This video has been amazing. If you learned a lot and got value from it, gig them or give a big like and thumbs up to say thank you to these guys, to Abhilash, Sanjana, Jitesh for sharing their experience and telling you all the important topics for here at Texas A&M. Again, let us know in the comments if you guys think Texas A&M is the right place for you. Go ahead and tell us if you this is decided in your mind that you want to come here or what other questions you have about A&M. Again, share those in the comments. Hopefully this video is going to be helpful for everyone who's trying to shortlist their admit. Don't miss out on the housing video as well to learn about all the best housing options here in College Station for A&M students. And yeah, my friends, hopefully this was helpful. We really want to see you succeed, especially if you come to Texas A&M for your study abroad journey. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time at Chai and Coaching. Gig'em.